I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Junior Cert Maths exam. It consists of two papers and each paper is two and a half hours long. Broadly, paper one will assess topics such as algebra, functions, graphing, arithmetic and number and paper two will assess topics such as probability, statistics and the geometries. Students should remember that some topics can appear on either paper, for example sets or perimeter area and volume. There are between 13 and 14 questions usually per paper, however this is not officially fixed. There is no choice in the paper, meaning that all questions should be attempted. Questions don't necessarily carry equal marks. There is no fixed order to the questions, so students don't have to start at question 1, but if they don't start there, they need to remember that the further they progress into the paper, the greater the challenge that can be expected. Well, examiners are looking for students to hit their marking milestones in questions. For every question on the maths paper, the examiner has a model solution. It's very detailed and every line of the calculation is included in the solution. Marks are linked to significant milestones in the model solution. As the student progresses, they achieve these milestones and they're awarded marks linked to that milestone. This is of particular relevance for students looking for an A, as they regularly skip steps in solutions. If an error is made, the student will be given the marks linked with the last milestone achieved. Examiners are also looking for accuracy in calculations, rounding, graphing and their use of units. In particular, examiners want students to finish questions the way the exam paper has specified. For example, one or two decimal places in terms of pi or in sword form. Examiners want students to use their maths when they're asked for a reason or to explain something or to justify an answer. Well, of course, time management is crucial. There's a suggested maximum time for each question given on the paper. Students should not exceed this time limit. You can always come back and do a question if time permits at the end of an exam. Some students choose to do the questions that they're most comfortable with first. You don't have to work in order through the questions, but bear in mind that the further you progress into the paper, the greater the challenge will, there will be. Always recheck the first two questions that you've completed with a particularly keen eye, as they often contain errors that you wouldn't normally make. Sometimes the excitement or the anticipation at the beginning of an exam causes students to rush and make errors. Don't be afraid to take little breaks during the exam. Two and a half hours is a long time. You know, pause, take stock of what you've done and get ready for the tranche of work that lies ahead. Remember that it's okay to take time to think as well. The problem solving nature of some of the questions require you to determine a route to the correct solution and to plan it. With these types of questions, give yourself, yourself a moment or two to think. Of course, don't leave anything blank. Translated, this means attempt everything. Once a reasonable attempt has been made to solve every question, students should work back through the paper question by question. If there's a question that has five parts and three of them have been answered and no further progress has been made, the student should write down the answers from A, B and C into parts D and E, along with any relevant formulae to ensure that they get the attempt mark, what's now called a low partial credit, if it's available. <laughs>